It gives me great pleasure now to call on Ms. Morrison to introduce today's senior speaker, David Schenberg. Swim Club, which he's been doing since 2006. He's also a member of the Asheville Youth Symphony, where he plays the group. On campus, David is a headmaster scholar, a member of the National Honor Society, and a day student proctor. He participates in the PEP program and in notes for the soul. And as you've seen, he's an usher here in chapel and also a reader. I would describe David as a people person. He has the natural ability to make those around him feel comfortable. He is open, friendly, and definitely conversational. He enjoys travel and is fluent in Spanish. He's genuinely interested in other peoples and cultures. This stems from the fact that he is comfortable with himself and who he is. This type of self-confidence does not always come easily, something David will talk to us about this morning. David will remain one of the strongest ambassadors that we have for Christ School, even after graduation. He adds much to our community, and he's a good example to all of us about how to meet others and to see things from different perspectives. I have no doubt that whatever David pursues in the future will involve other people where he will find fulfillment because of his kind and gentle heart and his strong people skills. We will certainly miss David in the advisory group, but I know we won't lose touch because that's the type of friend that David is. So I'm pleased to give you David Chandler. spring of 1999, a woman named Maria Juarez decided that she could not take care of her child, and she decided to put him up for adoption. By some miracle, of course at the hands of God, he guided her to pick my parents, Jody Schamberg and Wendell Lawson. They were in the golden years of their life, and they didn't have to take on a child, let alone me. But thank you for giving the best 18 years of your life where you could have been golfing, playing tennis, or whatever you two like to do, and raising and loving me unconditionally, coming to my boot recitals, watching me swim up and down the pool, even if I do look like a pregnant manatee when I swim the mile. <laughs> <laughs> but that's nothing. When I was at camp, I was my own buddy for the swim test. <laughs> On a whim, you stopped any student here during any given time of the day and asked him, tell me three things about David Chamber. I guarantee you the answer would be, and most likely in this order, well, he's Jewish, <laughs> and he has two moms, 
Levi used to swim. And suddenly, eighth grade may also add that I bear a striking resemblance to an isosceles triangle. <laughs> I vividly remember my first day at Christ School. It was a rainy morning in August of 2013, and I thought classes started at 8.20 rather than 8.30, which was good because I went to the wrong classroom for a block. But while I was in class, I realized that I had left my schedule in my locker, and I couldn't return to it for at least an hour. I mindlessly followed Will Gooseman from my first class to Miss Morrison's D-Block English 8, praying that I was in the right place. It was in that short walk from one end of Upper Wetmore to the other that I felt something that I'd never felt before at school. Fear. I was afraid I was going to the wrong class. I was afraid I was going to embarrass myself in front of a group of people I barely met. I was afraid people were going to make fun of me for being Jewish or for having two moms. Rather than confront these fears, I ran from them. I pretended to be sick on Rosh Hashanah, so I didn't have to tell my classmates when they asked me the next day why I had missed that, well, it was the Jewish New Year, and since I'm Jewish, of course, I had to be a good little boy and go to temple and sit all day with my parents. During Father-Son Weekend, my friends expressed their excitement about their dads coming down, and I told them my family would be out of town, avoiding telling them that I had two parents, but I had two moms and no dad. Sometime between the first mid-quarter and fall break, my fears began to shrink a little bit. Every year at Convocation, Mr. Krieger stands right here and reminds us what a special place Christ School is. He tells us that Christ School operates much like a poker game. Everyone is invited to the table, but in order for the game to work, everyone has to ante up. Everyone has to be their true selves, or else the game cannot be played to the fullest extent. So, I decided to let down my walls. I wanted to see what would happen if I shared the parts of my life that I was hiding. It's funny to me. The things that I was once petrified to share are now the characteristics that proudly define me here at Christ School. The minute I stopped pretending to be what I thought Christ School wanted me to be and started being myself is the minute that I fell in love with this school. Now, if you go out into the Asheville community and ask the first person you see what he or she thinks of Christ School, you may get a hostile or even negative answer. I know this from experience. But you see, that person doesn't know Christ School like you and I do. They don't understand our commitment to the grind. They don't understand our brotherhood. And they don't understand our struggle. And that's the point I want to focus on today, that struggle. Sometimes in the hallways we see our brothers excited, energized, and hyped. Other times they hang their heads as they wrestle with academic, social, or spiritual challenges. I've done my fair share of wrestling with issues here at Christ School, and I can tell you while you're in the eye of the storm, things may look rough. You may feel hopeless, anxious, scared. You might even feel broken. This past Christmas in Cancun, I was playing with my little cousin Ryan, he's about two, and he wanted to play with a glow stick on New Year's Eve, so I handed him one, and he proceeded to play with it. The little two-year-old he was, and waved it around, but it wasn't glowing. So I took it from him, and I snapped it, handed it back, and he, pretended he proceeded to play. You see, we're a lot like these glow sticks. We have to be broken first before we can shine. Just like Jacob and the angel of God, you must embrace the struggle and let it shape you into the man that God wants you to be. It will make your imminent victory so much sweeter. But here at Christ School, no one struggles alone. You have 292 brothers helping you and cheering you on the whole way. And really, at its core, Christ School is a community of love. And I hesitate to use that word because it's become cliché. Love is a word that has been hammered and forced and beaten into the lexicon of a 21st century politically correct society, and the word has lost its meaning. Everything we do here at Christ School, we do together. We go into and come out of every situation side by side as brothers. If that's not love, then I don't know what is. We seniors only have eight weeks left here. And some of them I know are eagerly counting down the days. But my challenge to you all today is to take these words to heart. 
to carry out Christ School's legacy of love and brotherhood. So be swift to live fully and laugh loudly, make mistakes boldly, make haste to make a difference in the lives of others. Because Christ School is not really a place. We are not defined by the 500 acres of campus that's rest here in Arden, North Carolina. We are defined by the thousands of greenies that came before us and are still to come. Christ School is a people, and Christ School is a home. In a couple of months or even years, I'm going to wish I could be like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, tap my heels together, and be transported back just by saying there is no place like home. And there really is no place like home. But home is neither a physical nor ideological place. Always remember that home is where the heart is. And all of your hearts are here in Christ School. Thank you for the past five years. God bless and go green.